Hello everyone and welcome to the Anime Zillia and today we're going to be talking about Darwin's Game episode 2 of the anime series. Now this episode all in all, um, it was okay. There wasn't really a lot to get excited about if I'm perfectly honest, it was more of a chilled episode. And there's a lot of kind of information in this episode and they explain quite a few things that do intrigue me a little bit and we can speculate a little bit as to what's going to happen in the future episodes. So let's talk about them. First things first, we start the episode off with a bit of spice. As you all know, uh, the episode ended last week with her waking up and they're both seemingly like, you know, half naked or mostly naked. And um, this isn't what the episode wanted to start off with. Um, what it was actually trying to get to us and telling us was the fact that there are things called clans. These clans are quite interesting because you can kind of create fractions. We have the um, we have the Danjo Boxing Club. We've got uh, the Ace Clan. So those are two clans that we already know of. And when Shuka basically said, "Will you be my family?" Um, in the end of last week's episode, she basically referred to the fact is, "Will you join a clan with me?" Well, that's what she was. That's what she said she was referring to. Whether or not that actually is her true feelings, we don't know. She seems in this episode to be quite playful, quite jolly, um, quite enjoying herself, and she calls what they do a date. So maybe she has some feelings towards the main character. I don't see why. Um, but there we go. But the idea of clans could be pretty cool. Now, the reason why I say that is because you have to be a certain level within the game to be able to create a clan. Kaname isn't at that level yet. Shuka is, but Kaname isn't. Shuka is like way up here. Kaname is like down, down the bottom. And um, we know that our main protagonist doesn't like fighting. He doesn't want people to die in this game, which is the typical main character route, you know. I don't want to fight if it means the death. I don't want to kill anybody. However, let's say for example, he creates his own clan. He gets that high and he creates a clan known as Surrender. Um, maybe a pretty cool name if I'm honest, but um, this episode would highly back that up. The reason being is Kaname gets both Shuka in the last week's episode to surrender and wins, and he gets um, the new character that comes after him to surrender and wins. We'll talk about that in just a minute. So the idea of him creating a clan with Shuka and other characters um, called something like Surrender in where they have a rule where they don't kill their opponent, they make them surrender instead, kind of fits his character and fits the theme that they're kind of going with so far. And honestly, that might be wrong, but that's just an idea. So next, we do transition into this weird fight here. And this is one thing I want to just raise up real quick, because the kind of male character gets destroyed by the lady in the fox mask, and he's like, would you... The one who killed 12 people in Shibuya. And uh, we know Shuka knows about this. And honestly, I don't think it's um, this fox lady that killed those 12. Because even though they stated that she has the ability to kill 12 at once. Um, you know, they leave it very ambiguous in this part of the episode. It's like, well, maybe it could have been somebody anonymous. So they're kind of hinting at the fact it's a different character. Um... Maybe, this is just a crazy off-the-top-head theory, maybe it's Shuka herself. Maybe when she's, like, at night or something, she becomes a different sort of personality. And that's why we see her looking at that kind of monument and statue um, where the 12 people got destroyed, uh, you know, in the previous episode. I think that might be pretty cool. That had a bit more dimension to Shuka's character, and it would kind of understandably kind of makes sense in a way because we've seen her last week in the you know at night in the warehouse basically being all serious bloodlust and wanting to kind of very cautious but in this episode she seems very lively happy jolly adorable cute all those type of happy emotions and that's during the day so who knows maybe shuka's got more than meets the eye because we go shopping! And the main character's face in this was actually just every man's face. When he's just like, come on. 
more clothes. And then she goes, what does this look like on me? And it's like, yeah, great, great. Okay, I'm going to buy more. Honestly, this shopping scene you could consider as filler. Yes, they also went out on a date. But the main thing that this kind of scene wanted to do, I, in my opinion, was to basically show off Shuka's personality. Maybe they're alluding to something more. But it does add more kind of personality and another side to her character, so I do appreciate that. Because at the moment, Shuka is probably one of my favourite characters. Because, you know, she's just that good. Okay, so then, let's talk about the phone. This episode, they kind of show us the importance of the phone. You can surrender a fight in the phone, okay? Your phone is basically your lifeline. If you lose your phone, you don't know where your enemy is on your map. You don't know if you're going to be uh, issued a battle. You don't know if you're issued an event. You basically are lost without your phone. And if it breaks, you can basically download the app on another one using a different weird server. However, they did allude to that being very kind of difficult. It's also worth noting that you could buy things called shelters, which can basically prevent battles from happening but it can't prevent encounter battles where you're challenged by a person in front of you. So that was pretty intriguing. And the point system, it can be converted into cash. And could this be why the analysis girl at the end uh, that was typing away at the end of last week's episode, is that why she sells information? Because she just wants to be rich and she doesn't want to fight? Um, seems like a logical conclusion there. And this is actually tested, because Kaname tests this with just 10 points. He converts 10 points into cash, and he gets himself a whopping 1 million yen. Well, I presume it's 1 million yen, because that's the currency that they have in Japan. Um, but yeah, he goes, what? An extra 1 million? That's impossible. And, you know, another weird thing is that if you talk about the game outside the game, it is a violation of the rules, which... Um, you know, I like that, that's pretty, pretty decent, there's a lot of rules to follow, and if you, basically, if you violate any of the rules, your account gets deleted, and you get teleported straight out. Pretty interesting. So, like I said, it's very safe to say that this phone, being your lifeline, is a very important object, and you don't want anyone else to have it. Of course, they have to highlight this importance by making the main character lose his phone, um, to his enemy. However, they also use it to show away how you can win. And I thought that was a very good idea. Because they have this new character called uh, Inukai. And he comes in, takes Kaname's phone, and he's like, Oh, I could basically end you right now because I got your phone. I could do everything with you. I could delete your account and you would you basically die. And um, Inukai seems like a pretty decent character, so, you know, he wouldn't do that. However... Um, the fact that they kind of showed off the fact that if you take someone else's phone and you threaten to destroy it to make him surrender, that could be a way that Kaname and his clan that he creates in the future tries to end all fights um, and just create, it, create a game where it's not a death game essentially, but it's a game where you can enjoy and enjoy a good fight. But alternately, the only way to kind of win is to make your opponent surrender, and if you break those rules, the surrender clan will come after you. Which doesn't really make much sense, because they're not going to kill you. But you get what I mean. You understand what I mean. And, um, you know, maybe that ties in with it, maybe that doesn't, maybe that's just me thinking too much into things, which normally does happen. So then, let's talk about a few of the characters in this episode, because we actually have this... Um, Actually, let's talk about the event first. The event is essentially a an event to go out. You're in Shibuya, and it's a big battle royale, essentially, where you've got to fight three rings in, in order to kind of survive. Any characters at the end of the allocated time without three rings is deleted. They're dead. They're gone. Goodbye. Now, I agree with uh, the analysis go in this episode. The, the admins probably didn't put in 300 rings, um, no, 900 rings, because there are 300 players, um, obviously they want, they want to dwindle their players down and make it more dramatic, they want to make it more heart-thrilling and 
blood pumping. So they would probably have like, I don't know, 50 rings in total. Maybe. 51. Um, and that will kind of narrow it down so that these 300 players actually probably become only like 12 by the end of it. Or, hey, if they actually only have three rings, that would be a very, very bad move. But that would, because that would basically mean we have this whole event throughout the entirety of the, uh, the entirety of the season. Which I wouldn't like, because that seemed like it's too dragged out. But anyway, we have this event. We don't know much more about it, except for the fact is that you have to collect these rings. Um, it's basically a treasure hunt, so to speak. Um, but a few characters are going to be handicapped. Kaname got basically put in somewhere where Shuka isn't. So he's going to be at a disadvantage. He's going to have to learn to fight on his own. Which I'm looking forward to, because he definitely needs that. Uh, Shuka is obviously going to be worried about Kaname because he's going to she's going to be trying to go back and forth. Which hey, she sent a friend request to him. The analysis girl, she was put into the event and she's going to struggle because I don't believe she's a fighter. Um, and Inukai, uh, well, he's not exactly weak, but if he goes up against someone like the leader of Ace, then he's going to be in trouble because the Ace leader is this guy. And we saw what he did last week. And he managed to survive 400 degree flames and push a woman off a building. So, yeah. He's going to be trouble. Obviously, we might have the fox lady as well. So she'll be a contender. But anyway, let's real quick talk about some of the good points from the characters. And then we'll, uh, I'll wrap this review up. So then we start off with Kaname. Uh... He's got good thinking skills in this episode. He shows he's tactic, tactically aware. Um, and, you know, with the whole idea of getting the phone off the opponent to make him surrender. That was clever. I liked it. Um, Combat-wise, he showed that he was really sluggish and amateurish. Which I guess he still is. But I'd like to see more development from him. Shuka. Fun. Cute. And adorable. That's rightly explains her performance in this episode. Her choice of new clothes were very nice, as you can see up on screen. Um, although I do prefer the red, but it does the blue does fit her quite nicely. Um, a playful attitude was welcoming in this episode, because all the main character did was worry and complain. Because he was like, oh no, we got this event, what's going to happen? Shouldn't we be preparing? Should we do this and do that? And she's like, no, nope, we're on a date. We're going to go and find things. We're going to go and have some fun, eat some crepes. And I actually quite like that. I thought that, you know, it was a nice brush of fresh air. We've had so much kind of um, negativity and drama already in this series, kind of, where things have been quite dark, quite serious. So it's nice to have a little bit of a break, even if it is considered filler. Now, the interesting one is the analysis female character. Um... She's an interesting character. She sells information um, in this episode. And she does that to three people. And information is information based on Kaname. Because he's a rookie that people want to talk about and want to know about. But we don't see two of the people that she sells information to. Um, so that basically means that they're going to be enemies later on. Or they could be leveraged for it if she hasn't done that already. But now, this is where things get interesting for her character. Because she's in this event to collect rings. Now, just... Finding the rings would probably be an easy task for her. She can use her network and her skills of gathering information to basically go, rings are here, rings are here, they've got rings. Um, but acquiring them would probably be the hardest thing for her. Because she doesn't look like a fighter. Now, she might have had to have survived a couple of fights um, to basically get the points she needs to be able to become the position that she's in. But at the end of the day, I can't see her going up against someone like Inukai or Shuka um, and surviving, like, easily. And I think it's also obvious to state that, you know, she's going to have to reveal herself in this episode. And it's probably going to be to the main antagonist. I meant season, not episode. But it's probably going to be to the main antagonist, uh, protagonist. As she'll probably, like, need help, mostly. And she'll probably feel mostly safest with him. Not in the sense that he'll be able to protect her, but in the sense that he's trustworthy. Because if Shuka can, can trust him, then obviously she'd probably think that she can. And the, Shuka and her seem to have a connection already. Whether it's just a client and um, 
information broker kind of information network they've got going on. I don't know. But, you know, it is something. Maybe it's friendship. Who knows? And uh, it's clear in this episode that she doesn't want her identity to be known. She uses a voice changer when talking to people. Um, so this is probably going to be a hard decision for her. And we might see some development from her character. Which would be pretty good. And lastly, Inukai. A member of the um, Danjo Boxing Club. One of the youngest players in the Darwin's game. He's got good design, interesting character. Um, I like his abilities and his skills at the moment that we've seen at this, at this moment in time. Seems like he's got like some sort of acceleration ability, which would seem pretty cool with his fighting style. And there's a possibility that he might team up with Kaname in the future. Because he doesn't seem like a... Uh, a behind. He seems kind of like... He seems friendly enough, basically. He doesn't like being in clans, although the, he is in one. But I think if situation calls for it, he might team up with somebody if, you know, there's no other option. So all in all, I thought this episode was it was pretty good. As if I had to rate it, I'd probably say it was about a 5.5 or a 6. Like, it was a change of pace, but I prefer a little bit more kind of fast moving. I thought this episode was a little bit slow. Um, and having the whole date scene and the shopping scene in between probably wasn't the best idea for episode 2. I'm just hoping that episode 3 gives us a bit more to hold on to and uh, gives us something that we want to see. Anyway, that's going to be it for this review. I hope you've enjoyed. If you have, hit that like button. Subscribe if you're new so you never miss a video from me. If you like anime content as well, I do more of that. Go check out the channel um, in your own time. Uh, is that everything? Let me know all your thoughts down below in the comment section. And I hope you'll have an amazing day and I'll catch you next time. Bye.